day class so for today we're going to uh, start with the problem application so first order differential equation so the entire coverage of your midterm actually is about the application of first order differential equations in modeling worded problems so the first worded problem that we're going to model today using uh, first order differential equation is a problem or our problems concerning growth and decay so when we speak of growth we expect that the value of anything may it be in number may it be in mass may it be in volume will be increasing and when we speak of decay so it's the opposite of growth we expect that the value will be decreasing now the formula that you are seeing here inside the box is already a ready-made formula derived from a first order differential equation that I will be showing to you in a while after I have discussed what you have in this formula. The formulas here allow you to determine the amount of the material whether in number, in mass, or in anything in terms of amount the, after a certain time has elapsed. So if it is growing, what would be the amount of that material after some time t? And if it is decreasing in value or if it is decaying in value or another term may be decomposing in value, then what would be its value A after some time? So A is the value of that thing, the amount of that material after some time T. Now this C and K are constants which we are to determine based on the given information in the problem. So the C is a constant whose value that we will determine in the same thing with K. Now the difference with the two formula that you are seeing on top is the sign in the argument of the exponential function. So in the growth problem, the sign of the uh, argument of the E is positive, whereas in here, the argument has a sign which is negative. So you shouldn't forget that in terms of using this particular formula later on in solving problems. Now you may wonder why, how do we determine the value of this constant C and K? C and K. So we will determine those based on the information given in the problem. So the above formula is only applicable when the rate of growth or decay is proportional to the amount present at any time. So, when you solve problem class later on, you need not derive again this formula because this formula already came from a differential equation, which I will derive in a little while. All you have to do is use the formula directly and solve for what the problem is asking you to solve or is determining, uh, asking you to determine. You need not again derive the formula. I will be the one to derive the said formula based on the statement that is being uh, mentioned here. So it says the above formula is only applicable when the rate of growth or decay is proportional to the amount present at any time t. So I'd like to go to this one so I can show to you what's the differential equation appropriate for such statement. So it's saying here Okay. okay, sorry about that class. I will see if I have already the board. So this is it. So it says the said derived formula is only applicable to uh, problems wherein the rate of increase or decrease is directly proportional to the amount present at any time. So when we speak of rate of increase or decrease in terms of a derivative and when we speak of A as the amount, we can write this using in your calculus the derivative dA dt. This is how A is going to decrease or increase at any particular time. So it says that DE, that, that particular formula was derived using the 
relationship that the rate of change at any particular time should be directly proportional to the amount present at that particular time. So this is your relationship for that. Now, since in equations, we cannot derive if we have this directly proportional symbol. So we will change that into an equal sign. So I will have that change. So I will have dA dT. And I will change the directly proportional symbol to equal sign. And in that process, I will introduce a constant k. So this constant k is what we call as the rate constant. So you have seen it in the problem. It's k. So this is the k that I am introducing here. So you could see, uh, sorry, you could see in our um, formula in here that that k, this k, is the k that I was showing to you a while ago. The rate constant or the growth rate constant k here and the dk rate constant k here are all the k that I am showing you in this particular equation. They are the rate constant. So if the problem is a growth problem, this is the growth rate constant. And if the problem is a dk problem, then it's a dk rate constant. Now we will derive the formula that you have seen there. So that would be now dA. Since this particular differential equation is a parable, I'd like to transfer A here. So I will place A here. Then that would be equal to K D T. Now, if I'm going to integrate both sides of my equation to finish off the solution of this particular DE, and this will start off with time equal to zero to time T at any particular time T. And this will start off with time, let's say, uh, let's say value AO, the initial value, or A as the final value. That is if you want it specific. But later on, we can make it, let's say for now, I will make the formula look similar to what you are saying. So I will simply have this written with no. I won't have limits reflected here. So we'll see you will see the exact formula that you written that is written inside the box. So if you're going to uh, integrate the set equation, this will give you an ln of a and this will give you a kt. Right? Then I want a to be isolated, meaning it should not be up for uh, an argument of the ln. So I have with a here equal to e raised to kt. You may wonder, I don't have any limits here, so there should be an integration constant c here. So I missed that out. So I'll place the integration constant c here, and I should place the c in here as well. So now, this one would be an e raised to kt plus c. Now, if I will simplify further by rules of exponent in algebra, this would be e raised to kt times e raised to c. This e raised to c is an arbitrary constant which is similar to c which is an arbitrary constant in itself. So the reason why you are seeing in that particular formula there in the box in the word file as e raised to c e raised to kt. So that's how that particular formula came about. So if your problem is growth, this is your formula. But if the problem is dk, then this should be negative. So this should be negative. This should be negative. So this is negative. This is negative. Everything here becomes negative. So that's the only difference. So that explains the formula that you are seeing here in this file. So that's how the set formula came about from this particular differential equation. This is the original differential equation. So what if you already place in here limits? So that will not anymore entail the, the appearance of the arbitrary constant of integration C here. So we will have that in here. So let's say for example you have limits. So dA over A is equal to K dT. And I will place limits here 0 to and I will place limit here, initial amount, 
to a final amount A at any time. So when I integrate, this would be the ln of A with limits A sub O to A. And I will have in this side KT with limits 0 to T. If you're going to substitute the limits, that would be ln of A over A sub O being equal to KT. Right? You substituted the limits already. Then you simplify it the way you simplified it, the other one that I have shown to you a while ago. So taking, getting rid of the ln. So you have to make left side and right side of your equation the argument of the E. So in that case, I will have A over AO equal to E raised to KT. And you will have a more specific formula this time, which is, this is your formula now, A equal to AO E raised to KT. So, if you know the initial amount of A given after some time, and if you have determined already the rate constant, whether it's growth or decay rate constant, you can determine the amount of A at any time. So, this one is for a growth problem, and this another one is for a decay problem. Okay. So, positive here because it's growth, negative here because it's decay. A sub O is the initial concentration of the material or the initial amount, the number of the material or anything that, has cons that concerns amount of material, initial amount is AO. Amount after some time T given in the problem is A. The K is to be determined based on conditions that are stipulated in the problem. So let's see. <clears throat> in your file, which I have uploaded already in Canvas, you have two sample problems and one special problem talking about the carbon dating, the radiocarbon dating, and you are to read this in your spare time and uh, understand the solution of the set problems because it has already solutions. Then, we will discuss on Monday, feedbacking on the portions here that you cannot understand. So this is for the first two sample problems, which does not need for you to understand radiocarbon dating. And the third one needs you to read on first an intro about radiocarbon dating. I will also upload in Canvas your problem set, which is due next week also on Wednesday. Should you have any question as to the problems that are in here, feel free to message me in Canvas or in your messenger. We will do feedbacking on this on Monday. So, happy learning class!